On June 30, 1994, Palmer was playing at a neighbor's house in Henrietta Street, Hartlepool, after being collected from nursery school by her stepfather, John Thornton. At approximately 15.30, Gary Amerigo, the local ice cream vendor, arrived and Palmer went to ask Thornton if she could have money to buy an ice pop. She was the only customer, and after serving her, the ice cream salesman left and continued his route. Amerigo said later, only Rosie came up to my van that day. She didn't have enough money but I gave her the ice cream anyway. She seemed just her usual self, bright and cheerful. Armstrong, who was celebrating his 32nd birthday that day, abducted her as she walked away after making her purchase. It was approximately two hours before Thornton realized Palmer was no longer at the neighbors or playing outside the house. He and other local residents began to search the local area for her, and at 2045 she was reported missing to the police. The police search operation was headed by Detective Superintendent Doug Smith of Cleveland Police and involved door-to-door -door inquiries, tracker dogs, and local volunteers. Warehouses, industrial buildings, and disused buildings around the adjacent docks were searched while a Coast Guard, a police helicopter, and a Royal National Lifeboat Institution RNLI, lifeboat searched the sea and shore. Police first called at Armstrong's flat on July 1 while conducting initial door-to-door -door inquiries during which residents were asked to answer a questionnaire aimed at tracing her last movements. On July 2 they returned while carrying out cursory searches of houses in the area. On July 3 two detectives spoke to Armstrong, they noticed that his previously cooperative, friendly and helpful demeanor had changed, and that he then appeared very shifty on edge and looking very worried. Acting on suspicion, the detectives arrested Armstrong and a second search of his first floor flat was conducted. Palmer's mutilated body was found in a bin liner inside an airing cupboard in the flat. Her shorts and underwear were found nearby in a separate bag. Armstrong denied any involvement in the crime and claimed that someone else must have put the body there. The mother of Rosie Palmer was allowed to see her daughter's body in a mortuary in Hartlepool. After bereavement experts persuaded police that it would be damaging to continue to prevent her from doing so. MRS. Palmer had criticized the police for failing to find her daughter in time, her body was found in a flat 20 yards from her home, and for refusing to let her see the body after it was found on Sunday. Police said they were trying to save her further distress because the body was decomposing. After leaving the mortuary, MRS Palmer said, I saw my daughter because I wanted her to know that mummy still loves her. Sean Anthony Armstrong was born on June 30, 1962 in Easington and had lived in the country Durham and Cleveland area for most of his life, moving into a council-owned flat on Frederick Street in August 1993. He was unemployed, with a dependency on alcohol and prescription drugs, and had a string of previous convictions to his name. He had been investigated in relation to sex offenses against children, although never charged. He was also diagnosed with a personality disorder and a psychopathic personality. He had obtained the flat after his psychiatric consultant wrote a supporting letter to the housing department stating that he was vulnerable. On the estate he was called Tony the Pervert and was generally considered a loner, disliked or distrusted by all those who knew him. On June 30, 1994, Armstrong, who had been drunk for two days solid, partying for his birthday, at different people's houses and pubs and clubs, arrived home by taxi at 15.30, about the same time that the ice cream van pulled into Henrietta Street. The rear of Armstrong's flat backed onto the cul-de-sac where Palmer purchased her ice cream. Post-mortem examination determined that she was dead by 16.30, although pathologists were unable to give a specific cause of death due to the condition of her body. Debt. Supped. Smith told a news conference, she had been severely sexually assaulted. 
that is a possible cause of death the actual injury itself. At around 1630 Armstrong called in at a local shop where he said he was going to help look for the little girl who had vanished even though Rosie Palmer had not yet been reported missing. The shopkeeper noticed blood on Armstrong's hand, which Armstrong said was the result of being bitten by his dog, despite the absence of any wound. Armstrong then took his dog and a bottle of cider to the nearby beach and began running in and out of the sea for two hours until neighbors reported him to the police who arrived and told him to go home. Armstrong was charged with murder and remanded in custody to await trial at Leeds Crown Court. He planned to feign mental illness and plead guilty to manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility. However while on remand he had revealed this plan in a letter to crime author Bernard O'Mahony who had posed as a woman in hope of getting a written confession from the killer. This letter was given to police and shown to the jury at Armstrong's trial, and he quickly changed his plea to guilty of murder. Armstrong was sentenced to life imprisonment on July 28, 1995. The trial judge, Mr. Justice Ognall, did not make any recommendation as to how many years Armstrong should serve before he could be considered for parole, though in a high court ruling of May 2006, Mr. Justice Crane set the minimum term to 16 years subject to a deduction of 12 months and 21 days for the period on remand, meaning Armstrong was eligible for parole in July 2010. Sean Armstrong was jailed for life for the brutal murder of three-year-old Rosie Palmer, from Hartlepool, whose battered and sexually abused body was discovered in a bin liner in his home. He protested his innocence to police but confessed to the crime in letters he wrote to author Bernard O'Mahony who posed as a woman to gain Armstrong's trust. Armstrong was jailed in 1995 following a last-minute confession after police were given the letters. To make matters worse he had been granted legal aid to sue the man who helped put him behind bars. Armstrong, who was known to have psychiatric problems and had threatened to kill children, was released from Hartlepool General Hospital and rehoused as a neighbor to Rosie's family in 1993. A report in the psychiatric care given to Armstrong was published in June 1996, two years after he murdered Palmer, and the local health authority criticized the standard of care as inadequate and full of shortcomings, but added that the murder of Palmer could not have been predicted. In June 1997, Palmer's mother, Beverly Yates, launched a £200,000 compensation claim against T's Health Authority in Hartlepool and East Durham NHS Trust, alleging negligence for allowing Armstrong to be released from their care. This was thought to be the first damages claim against a health authority or NHS trust by a relative of someone murdered by a released patient. The claim was struck out in February 1998 in the High Court by Master Hodgson who ruled that Armstrong had made no direct threat against Palmer and her family. He said, in the absence of such a specific threat I think it is impossible, as the law currently stands, for me to hold that the hospital in these circumstances owes effectively a duty, of care, to the world at large. In June 1999 the case was appealed to the Court of Appeal. On July 1, 1999 Lord Justice Stuart Smith upheld the previous High Court ruling that there was no connection between the health authority or the hospital and Palmer. After a number of years during which very little was reported about the Rosie Palmer murder case, by this stage, the proceedings had already cost thousands of pounds worth of taxpayers' money. In March 2010, with Armstrong's earliest possible release date just four months away, Yates oversaw the launch of a campaign in Hartlepool for Armstrong to be placed on the sex offenders register when and if he is paroled as the law stands he will not go onto the register once released, because he was not convicted of a sexual offence. Update From what I have understood the worthless bastard has been released from prison. Rosie's mother is doing everything in her power to put him back behind bars. Rest in peace little angel and you will never be forgotten.